I have here a uh, Panasonic electric shaver. So if I had this thing since I think since the mid 90s, uh, this one's uh, model ES762. So uh, probably like seven or maybe even ten years ago, the battery started to get get kind of weak. Um, it basically showed um, it always showed that it needed recharge when I when I ran it. It never showed that it was was fully charged, uh, but you know, but uh, it still worked. Uh, leaving it in, plugged in for the day, then I use it. I could use it for like probably like two or three minutes straight before the battery got weak. And only more recently, in the past few months, it got really weak, where uh, it you know barely stayed on for like 30 seconds. So uh, I decided it was time to change the batteries. Actually, I have uh, I wasn't sure what was in here, so I basically I took it apart. I saw that it basically used uh AA style type batteries or size batteries uh this, these ones are have little pins on them to hold it in there I, you'll see it in a little bit when i take this apart but these are you know this this is from the 90s so so the batteries back then were still nightcat batteries I, I have no idea what the new batteries run now but uh but i, I put in some nickel metal hydrates so basically that's just the two screws here that's about it Actually, yeah, let's take off this cap here. So take this off, you know, all you have to do is just kind of pull on this. And it's actually held on by this little little snap here. So that's uh, easy to come off. Uh, and on here, you actually have these two clips that's that's actually connected to each, uh, each of the blade. So when you turn it on, uh, this one moves so that the center, the center, uh, uh, the center foil here will cut, and you know, on this side it's connected to this piece right here for the you know for I guess that's for beards or whatever it is. Um, so you have to basically unclip those using the uh, flathead. I just pry it off. So, you know, you know, be real gentle because this you know it's just plastic, uh, so it could it could potentially break easy. Um, see, I'm trying to unclip it. Oops, that one flying. So watch out, watch out, it might go flying on you. So um, that one flying on me, but still okay. Okay, from there, actually, I could have could have done this beforehand. Basically, just pull these off. Um, set that aside. So I'm good on that that end right there. Uh. Now we'll actually uh, take off the back side. So basically just these two screws here. This is a Phillips style screw, or actually it's not really a Phillips, it's actually a Japanese standard, Japanese industrial standard screw. Uh, and I actually have here a Japanese uh, screwdriver. And they, you know, the the Japanese screwdrivers, they, you know, just looking at it by eye, they look pretty much identical to, to Phillips, but they're actually not. They're, they are, uh, the geometry is a little bit different. So the tail cap here, you see this little O-ring here, so that's, that's what keeps this thing waterproof. This is a wet-dry uh, shaver. Uh, it has little, this little inductive coil here, so this, this is how it charges, you know, so it stays waterproof. So obviously you, there's, there can't be any type of uh, metal contact as far as, um, you know, to, for it to be able to be waterproof. So actually, I need to pop this off for here. So this part sort of came off a little bit, so basically you just... You go in there and just kind of real gentle pop pop it off. Uh, the piece comes off. And all comes off real gentle. And this right here is a little switch for uh, for inside, so you, you actually have to pull this off too. Pull that off. So remember, everything that's plastic, be gentle with it. So that's about all you need to take off on that side. This side, you don't have to worry about this. This actually doesn't attach to anything. Uh, it actually, it actually held, it connected with this little, that little clip that I took off earlier. Yeah. So we're good there. Uh, now we should be able to just slide this off. Let's see. Oops. Don't put on this thing. I almost broke it. Well, actually, you know what? I need to take this off right here too. So these two. So remember that this thing is supposed to be uh, a wet dry shaver so uh, so you know you could uh, 
shave it while it's wet, which which I actually prefer. I think it shaves better when it's wet, and it doesn't, you know, it it, it has no uh, no um, irritation on your skin either when it's wet. Okay, from there, let's see if I can pull this out now. If not, can I have to? Oh, here it goes. Well, actually, it's still attached to this little rubber thing. Let's let's pop that off. I want I don't want to damage that rubber. So here, I'm not just gonna. Right, that off. That's off. So this little rubber thing here could actually come off. Um, so be be gentle. Actually, I got actually pulled it through on the back side. So be gentle with these things. Remember, it's it is. Uh, Anytime you have rubber and plastic, you know, you have to be careful of, uh, you know, ripping it. Basically, that's all we want here. Actually, I already put in some batteries here. So the original batteries. Let me show you how the original batteries came in there. The original battery has the two pins. And, and it has these little clips in here that actually snapped onto the, the pins here. It actually snapped in like that. Just like that. Uh, so these are old, and this is a little motor here that spins, spins the thing. Uh, so, so take that off. I am. I'm, you know, these are labeled as Duracell batteries, but actually these are actually uh, Sanyo. These are Sanyo N loop, N loop batteries. Best uh, best rechargeable uh, batteries on the market, I think. Uh, the nickel metal hydrates, and uh, I've had these for. I think about 10 years now and they still work fine. So I'm just gonna stick stick this in here. When you put this in here, it's because it's, you know, it wasn't designed for a regular, a standard AA. So it's gonna be real loose. So it, you know, it, won't, it, won't, it won't make any contact at the end here. So basically what I did was I actually took a piece of, uh, see here, I took a piece of a uh, piece of copper. I cut, cut a little strip and I folded it in half uh, so that I could get um, Get some, uh, get to fit better, and have some tension on there. So basically, it's the positive on the it's on the bottom side for this particular model. Maybe you have a different model, and it, it might be a little different. So, so you should always double check with a voltmeter, and that's how I figured out this because I have no idea. I mean, I was pretty sure that that the long pin side was the positive side, but I wasn't completely sure because it's not labeled. So I put a voltmeter on it, and it, you know, and that's what it showed. Okay, so now it's, it's on there, so I'm good there. Don't you know? Don't mess with this thing here. It could pop apart, uh, and don't turn it on right now either, because it, if you turn it on right now, this thing will actually just just go everywhere. And it, uh, you know, you know, it takes you still put it back together, but it's sort of a pain in the butt. So from there, uh, basically you put it back. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if I want to put this rope piece in first or. I mean, afterwards. Oops. Piece is coming apart there. So anyways, there, there's some grooves in here on this uh, the plastic piece where the, this rubber piece goes in. Actually, let me take this off and that way you guys can see it. So remember again, oops, be real careful with this. Otherwise, you could rip the uh, the rubber and you, know, you basically lose your... Uh, the waterproofness, right? And you rip the rubber. Be real gentle. Okay, so basically that's it right there. And you just need to come apart further, but I don't want to do that. I want to stick it in the way it is right now. Uh, put my let me put that in first and put it in this way so that way it's that way it holds together a little better it doesn't pop out like it did just uh, just right now just, just a moment ago uh, okay it's good there now I can just slide this in so remember that uh, the, the battery side or basically this the switch over here right so this switch is where that, that switch is so uh, so that's so this is uh, the front basically. 
slide that in there. And slide another way in. So you're good there. Here, let's put the base cap on so you don't have to worry about this thing coming out. So the how this how it's screwed on, you see where it's screwed on here. It's offset to uh, offset from the from the uh, center. So you so basically make sure you line up your uh, your uh, hose properly when you put it on there. Um, make sure it's all the way in and everything is, fits in along here, all the way around, nice and flush, you're including right here. So that, that's how it forms that that waterproof seal that it has. So I'm basically I'm just pushing on it while I uh, put the screws back in. Go here. Usually when I screw things on, I always uh, go reverse thread first and let it seat. You feel it and sometimes hear it when you feel that. Then it means you know it's seated and you could actually turn turn it in without uh, without worrying about uh, stripping the the threads. You know, especially this thing is, is you know everything's plastic, right? So uh, so be aware of that. Okay, in there, just it's a little bit snug and that's it. And remember, it's plastic, so you don't want to strip that thing. Here, I can put this on, and the clip's gonna go. I one earlier, just like that. And you actually, I could actually turn it on right now, and you can actually see it move. So there you go. So that's good right there. Uh, pop the face in. Mess that up. I think I'm supposed to put the face plate on first before uh, before I put this on. So, so I think I broke this little tab. Oh well, this is how it is. Well, actually, you know, it's it's staying. It's good. Yeah. Okay. All the clips are in. It's good. I could I could have done it the other way. Uh, okay. So here comes the probably the most difficult part is putting this this rubber piece down here. Uh, I think this is the hardest part. So remember. Uh, how this thing sits in here, it's just a little groove down in, in this plastic piece here. So the band of your, uh, the, where the hole is here, it needs to sit in that groove for it to uh, be proper, to fit properly. So I think that's the hardest part right there. So remember when you're doing this, you know, be real gentle with it. You know, it's, it's all rubber. Uh, and the good thing is that this is a quality, uh, you know, made in Japan. I'm not sure if the new ones are made in Japan or not, but you know, you know the saying they don't make them like they used to. Is you know it holds true. Uh, in this rubber, it, it's surprisingly it's still good. It's still pliable. It's not a uh, it's not all hardened and and cracking or anything like that. So it's so it's good rubber. Um, so cutting it in, pushing it in, and then basically at, towards the end, I just want to push it until it fits into that groove. You just you know, kind of slide it down, slide it down. And I want to use a flathead. Do that final sliding down into that groove. So once it fits into that groove, you know it's uh, this this rubber piece will pretty much be flush with this plate here, or the the plastic piece. Real gentle, real easy. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, so you could actually could push the little, the little uh, bellow part of it right here aside, and you actually see the uh, the rubber sitting inside the groove, and it's it's almost flush with, not quite flush, but almost flush with the with the plastic piece. So that side's good. This side needs to. Is it a work on here? Okay, so that's good. So once once that fits in that, that groove properly, you see on this, you know, if I angle it, you can actually see my, my rubber is more or less flush, uh, or almost flush with this 
P0, so that's what you want. That's when you know everything's uh, in properly. Then you can put this uh, plate back in. So remember which side is which. Yeah, where the button here is, you know, it has a little opening. That's that side's right. Just pop this in, push it in a little bit, and hold it down with one finger, uh, or two on both sides. Uh, again, reverse thread it. Then when you feel it uh, seat, then you could uh, spin it in there. So again, you know, it's these where it's screwing in is plastic. So, so when you get there, uh, just you know, don't over tighten it. Otherwise, you just strip the plastic. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Now I think this was at least the, when I originally did this. This was the, probably the hardest part right here. Was putting. Uh, these clips back in. It's kind of hard to do this. Uh, oh, there we go. Well, oh, that was easy. Well, much easier the second time around. I guess experience, a little bit of experience paid off, huh? Okay, so this right here, and this piece right here goes inside into this little groove right here. That's how that's how it activates your uh, your beard your beard cutter right here, your beard shaver. So I'm gonna same thing. Go sideways. Now we just need to push it into that groove. On that side, good. On that side, good. Okay, so this looks like it's in good. Let's see. Yeah, that looks looks good. So from there, pushing your uh, your foils or or the the blade, whatever they're called. I think the I think the other side is called the foil. Okay, those are good. There you go. Uh, this piece here. Uh, a little slot there. All you need to do is just slip it in there, push it in, and it snaps in, and that's it. So now it works again. Uh, the, the difference between using the nickel metal gel hydrate batteries versus the NICAD batteries is that nickel metal hydrate, when they're fully charged, they don't, you know, the, the voltage isn't as high as a, uh, as a NICAD, if I can remember right. Uh, I might be incorrect. It, may, it might be the other way. But anyways, um, now when I use this, light, you know, the, the recharge light doesn't come on until, until it gets weak, unlike the previous battery. Um, but the, so the only thing about that voltage that I mentioned uh, a moment ago is that since it doesn't go the full voltage, the charge light will actually never, uh, you know, never go green. Usually when, when you're charging, it's red, and when it's done, it goes green. It doesn't go green because it never reaches that full voltage. So basically, after I, I use it for you know three, four minutes or whatever, and you know I like to plug it in either overnight, uh, you know at night when I brush my teeth, I would plug it in, or or I put on the charger, or uh, after I finish using it in the morning. I plug it in, and when I come back, uh, when I get home that that uh, afternoon or evening, I unplug it, and I, I know it's it's it should be pretty much fully charged. Uh, that's it. So that's that's uh, you know changing the batteries, and basically uh, you know since this since this thing, <laughs> fortunately, uh, fortunately for me and some of you that are watching, it uses basically uh, the AA batteries, and you basically you know anytime your your batteries wear out, just replace them, put in some uh, some. Nickel metal hydride batteries, and you know you you could still get the uh, the replacement uh, foils and such for this. So you know why throw away a perfectly good uh, electric razor, right? You know this is a made in Japan Panasonic, uh, so it you know works really well. I like it, so so I'm just, I'm keep on using it. Hopefully it'll last me, you know, it lasts me uh, a lot longer, huh? A few more decades, hopefully at least. Um, originally this thing back in the, I got this thing as a as a Christmas uh, gift from my mom. Back when I was a teenager, um, and back then this this razor uh, cost, um, geez, it was like 130 bucks, I think, 120 bucks. So that was a lot of money back then, you know. And nowadays, I think the same, you know, the the, the or the more current model of this this uh, razor is it's about the same price, uh, maybe a few dollars more. But you know, since the prices hasn't changed much, 
that just shows you, um, you know, as in chances are that's you know the, the difference between being made in Japan versus made in China, and and uh, and the quality-wise, you know, this is a uh, really high high quality at the time. It's one of the higher higher-end uh, uh, electric razors from Panasonic, and it works great. So I like it. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful, and hopefully that, you know you guys, whoever's watching has this razor, you know, you guys will do the same and get a, a long life out of using it too. Um, oh, one more thing about the battery charging thing. So you know, so basically. Since they, they never reach that it's fully charged um, after you know after like for example overnight or eight hours or so you should just you know take it off you know don't leave it in there because if you leave it in there it'll keep on charging and it, and potentially those uh, nickel metal hydro batteries will uh, in here will um, overcharge and uh, and it could you know possibly leak or or, or whatever uh, uh, you know it ruin ruin your uh, your nice shaver right so uh, be aware of that otherwise that's it thank you.